The Lord is our refuge. We can find the King in God's abiding love. When troubles assail us, we call upon the Lord. When joys abound, we call upon the Lord. Welcome this day to God, to God's house, one of many dwellings and the, uh, of the Almighty One. We thank you and praise God for this refuge and sanctuary. Amen. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you. Good morning. God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are here. Come, this is the day that the Lord has made for us, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Action Hill. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are intergenerational church. As Adam read the call to worship, we invite the children and youth and young adults to be part of the, our worship service. And we are also a multicultural in, uh, church that we welcome everybody, no matter who they are, no matter what skin color we have, no matter what language we speak, no matter what sexual orientation we have, no matter how small we are, we welcome you everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen, amen. This is the church we come together. I am so happy to see you today to worship God with us. Our mission is to make and engage the disciple of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And God is calling our name together, together, to build together the house of God for the glory of God. Now let us worship God in spirit and truth. Let us pray. God is our refuge, a strong fortress. God of love, you have called us together this day. Mighty God, we are so grateful that we come together in this Sabbath day, in this holy sacred place, to communion with you, to share your love one another. Mighty God, please pour out the Holy Spirit upon us as we gather together in this place. Give us joyful heart, give us gladness heart, so that we can dance and praise and glorify you through our presence, through our praises and sings and psalms and songs and spiritual songs. Whatever forms we are here, we are here together to worship you. Mighty God, I offer special prayers for those who are near and dear to us. Some of them people who are, who are received hospital treatment. Some of them people who lost their loved ones. Some of them people who are struggling in their daily lives. You know all their situation. You even count their hairs, how many of them. You know everything about us. We are here. We surrender everything before you. Receive us as a living sacrifice. Use us for your glory and empower us so that we can truly be transformed and we can transform other lives through our presence, through our sharing and service and gifts and witness. Mary God, we're expecting you be he here to bless us, to restore us, and also to pour out the Holy Spirit upon us so that we can make a difference in our lives and others. And we're expecting that you hear our prayers and we believe that we are healed and we are restored. We are given strength and peace and joy in this moment. And we thank you for your presence, for your amazing grace. Now, as children of God, we offer our prayers that your son taught us, saying in our native tongues, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses against us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us pray together Tara's initiative prayer on your screen. Embolden us to be vulnerable and authentic seekers of your wisdom and your will. We claim this as a sacred and brave space for learning, for questioning, for building, for growth, and ask your bless on all we think, do, and become. Teach us to dare, teach us to remember, teach us to love, so that when we stumble or doubt, we choose wisely and walk for enthusiasm and embrace the promise you have placed in our heart. Make us catalysts of hope and thriving in the church and the world. Amen. Now, if you are able, please rise up. Let us sing together. My Jesus, my Savior. My Jesus, my Savior. Though there is none like you, all of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty morning, church. I'll be reading from Acts 7, verses 55 through 60, the New International Version. But this is the stoning of Stephen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. 
At this, they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, <clears throat> he fell asleep. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Brother Ross. Okay, this is the children's and youth moment. And I'd like to invite the children, youth, and all the adult congregants. And let's see what we have here. So Adam and Melanie, would you come? And Christina, I saw Christina. She did a special Olympic, and she did a fantastic job. I'm so proud of her. Yeah, you see the Christina. Um, let me share with you. You see the these medals, and she got the two medals. I'm so proud of her because she did a wonderful job, and then uh, she had a fun, and I had a fun with her and watching her, and she's growing, and then she did uh, she did her best. And look at her, what is it, Christina? Medals, yes, you ran very well. Thank you. You did a great job. Would you give big hands to her? <laughs> I'm so proud of her. Okay, thank you, Christina. You can sit here. Would you give me microphone? Okay. Yeah, last week, um, uh, Christina, Thursday, she had a special Olympics, and Prince George Colony. Uh, and then I know that, that you know that you are special education teachers, so I miss you to see there. <laughs> but Carol and I went there to see and cheer uh, Christina up. So uh, you guys did a wonderful job. We need to recognize our teachers, what they are doing, especially in special education. You have heart of the love, and you know you have a mind of Christ. Thank you for doing that for our children. And I'm so grateful that it our Christina had a great job. <laughs> okay. Well, see, um, Melanie and Adam, I'm so grateful that you came to the Sunday school and spent time with the teachers and try to learn what is God's message to you today. And I'm going to bring some these things. What is this? Stones. Stones. What's this? Stone. Stones. You have a stone. Do you think it, it looks like a bread? Can I eat it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, you're right. Well, there's, a, you know, three different kinds of stones. Do you know what we use for these stones? No. Well, no, yeah. You can guess. It's like a brick. Bricks. You're right. You're right, Malani. What about you, Ada? What we can do it with these stones? Oh, no. You don't know. You are honest. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what's this? This is made. This is made by stone, right? And where you sit it, and they're made by stones. So, um, in today's reading, the Ross read for us that we are like living stones, right? And our church address is living stone, you know, address is 6400 Livingstone Road. What a coincidence. <laughs> In the Bible, we are like living stones. And Jesus is our cornerstone. With these stones, you can build a house. You can build the house of God. You can build a church. And you can do many things with the stones. But the, in order to, to be built, it has to get together. It has to 
uh, mix it together and put it together. So what if these stones does not uh, you know, put it together? It just remain as a stone, right? And with these stones, you can, you can kill the people when you throw away to someone, right? And also you can be used for the glory of God to be built, right? So that it is very important lesson that Peter told us that we are like a living stone. Jesus is our cornerstone. When we have a cornerstone in Jesus Christ and that we can be built like a living stone for the benefit of others, and like you bring the Christ light into the church, you are built upon on God's love. You are built upon Jesus' cornerstone so that you can build house of God. You build church, right? And in a, when you do the Sunday school, you build the church with your presence, with your participation, with your prayers. But the, when these stones live alone on the street, just like become stones. It doesn't, it is not useful. So in order to be used for God's glory, we have to come together, like we worship together, like you bring the Christ like Melanie and Adam, and you come to the worship with your parents. You build something good for the glory of God. You are doing great job. So I'm so proud of you. So that the, you can ask other friends come to the church and coming together to build the church, to build the house of God. Then you can glorify God through your uh, participation. But uh, remember, when you use the these stones, just live here, just live here, just live here. It's just like a stone. It's, it is not useful. Sometimes using these stones, people throw away to hurting other people. But we have to come together and uh, you know, be used to be built the church through your participation. Right, Melanie? Yes, yes. yes. Right, Adam? Yes. Okay. So um, this stone also can be carved to make as a, like a necklace. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear God, we give thanks to you that you love us so much. You are our cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the living stone for us. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone for us. And you call us as a living stone to be built upon for your glory. Use us, mighty God, and bless our Melanie and Adam and Christina as they continue to come in together to worship you, to learn about your love, mighty God, please bless them and empower them and their parents so that, that they can continue to bring your light to others. And we thank you for listening our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Great job, Melanie. Thank you for giving me the cake last week that Melanie prepared her birthday cake and then the cupcakes, the muffins, and then she uh, served us. So I'm so grateful. Thank you. That's the way you're building the you know, living stone as a living stone. Great job. <laughs> you decorate the plaques this morning. Good job with your mama. Make sure to your grandkids and then your neighbor's kids, just keep inviting. Do not worry what they say. It is the you know, Holy Spirit's work that the send them here, but your job is just invitation. And that is that you can build a living stone. You can be a, like a living stone, build a house of God. Amen? Amen. Good morning, church. 
Please stand, if you are able, for the reading of the gospel. The gospel lesson this morning is taken from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. I will be reading in the, uh, from the New International Version. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Jesus, the way to the Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may, all, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want you to close your eyes. And breathe in. And breathe out. And follow after me with Jesus' prayer. Son of God, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Son of God, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Son of God, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Mighty God, please fill us with your holy power. Fill us with your strength and joy as we come together to listen to your word of healing, restoration, and blessing. We give ourselves to you in this moment. Mold us and empower us, reset us, mighty God, and we want to glorify you as a living stone. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, we pray together. Amen. Amen. Alenka shared a story about a woman. A woman was diagnosed with a terminal illness and had been given three months to live. As she was getting her things in order, she asked her pastor to come to her house to discuss some of her final wishes. She requests to be 
buried with her favorite Bible. And as the pastor prepared to leave, the woman suddenly remembered something else. There's one more thing, pastor, she said excitedly. What's that? said the pastor. This is so important, the woman said. I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. Fork. The pastor stood looking at the woman, not knowing quite what to say. And she explained, in all my years of attending church socials and potluck dinners, when the dishes of the main courses were being cleared, and someone would inevitably lean over and say to her, keep your fork. It was my favorite part of the meal because I knew something that was coming, like a velvety chocolate cake or a deep dish apple pie. So when people see me in the casket with a fork in my right hand, they ask, what is this fork? What is with the fork? I want you to tell them, keep your fork. The best is yet to come. So sweet, isn't it? She anticipated her dwelling place in heaven with the fork. Maybe she went to eating something in heaven, baba chocolate cake. I'm not sure she can eat it there, but maybe in heaven you don't have to eat anything there. So my question is to you, what do you anticipate in your life? We all dwell in some place. We live in a house. There are many rooms in our daily lives. We can choose to dwell in a place of worry, or we can choose to dwell in a place of confidence and peace where we can trust and believe in Jesus Christ. What makes you worry? Do you worry about your children or loved ones or your future? Today we hear about Jesus' farewell message to the disciples. Jesus knew that he would be betrayed by Judas. He would be denied by Simon Peter. And Jesus knew that he would be persecuted and crucified on the cross. And Jesus knew his upcoming trials and tribulations. But in this moment, Jesus comforted the disciples in John chapter 14. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? This message always using at funeral service. We all have final destinations, but death is not our final destination. Jesus says, there is many dwelling places in Father's house. What is the dwelling places in Father's house? What is it? In NIV version, dwelling places also are interpreted as many rooms. The word, the root word dwelling places comes from manner, which means abide in God's spirit. And also, dwelling places is designated to heaven. But we act like we live on this earth forever, and we live on this earth temporarily. That's the true. So which dwelling places are you living in now? and anticipating in the future. Let's go back in our first reading of Acts chapter 7. 
I wondered what made Stefan rely on God when people stoned him. In the moment of dying, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He prayed. He gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Stephan gave the dwelling places which we called heaven. He fixed his eyes upon Jesus while everyone around him was upset. They caught up in the drama. But Stephan focused beyond the noise, fear, and outrages. So I wonder what made him fix his eyes upon Jesus beyond the noise. Well, he prayed to God in the moment of dying and trials. Stephan was free from the bondage of reactivity to the drama or from defensive mode. And focusing his eyes upon Jesus allowed him to see the glory of God and to forget all around the stormy things. If he focused on people who throw stones at him, he might be paralyzed with terror or outrage or sorrow. But the, his eyes fixed upon Jesus and dwelled in God's presence. In Acts chapter 7, verse 56, it says, Look, Stephan said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, even at the moment people dragged him out of a city and began to stone him, he prayed for the people who stoned him. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. As Jesus said the same thing on the cross for our sins. What a moment. What a faith. Stephan used his last breath to share the truth of Jesus, no matter what it cost him. He prayed for forgiveness for the man who stoned him to death. Can you do that? Can you imagine that someone stoned you? Can you pray for the person who stoned you? Stephan impacted so many lives through his witness to the love of Jesus Christ. Even though he was being stoned to death, he could be able to forgive people because he fixed his eyes upon Jesus, which made him free from blaming him and defending or explaining or winning. He didn't even try, but he asking, please forgive them. Receive my spirit. Well, I recall when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, when I took the youth to the mountain of prayers, we all filled with the Holy Spirit. At that moment, I promised God that I would die for Christ and I would live for Christ. And I wanted to be martyred like a Stephan. But when I don't pray, I often worry too much when things don't go as expected. What makes me worry and restless? And I realize, because instead of relying on God and fix up my eyes upon Jesus, I focus on myself and my security. In act, we can see two different kind of people. People who stoned Stephan were filled with anger and anxiety, no peace at all, and outrage. They refused to listen to what Stephan was talking about Jesus. 
So in verse 57, we hear that they covered their ears against him. They were so angry and upset. And on the other hand, Satan focused his eyes upon Jesus and anticipated the dwelling place in heaven. He knew that his life is temporary on earth and he will live, he would live in heaven forever with the Lord. So let me ask you, which are you? Are you people like a Stefan? Or are you people like a spectators who watched Stefan's death? Or are you people like a, you drawn the stones at Stefan? Try to defending yourself? Try to winning over and explaining? We open ego to focus on our opponent to prove we are right. I sometimes do with my husband. <laughs> Our gaze is often fixed on the wrong thing. We gaze our eyes upon things that completely occupy our souls that prevent us from seeing the glory of God. But the Stephan shows another way, the way of Jesus, the way of life, the a way of truth that truly guides us to rely on God's presence. In our society, you see around the world, gun violence and drug addictions are rampant in every corner of our street. The most recent story being a dad, a father asked a neighbor in Texas to stop shooting because his one-year-old son was sleeping. And the result was that the man killed the entire family. The conflict in Sudan is so bad that many people migrate from the flood and seek refuge and shelter. In Texas, our borderline, people migrate from their country for better and more secure life. A year into Russia and Ukraine war, the end does not seem to be in sight. Global warming threatens God's creation and threatening our lives. And the COVID-19 virus still lingers in our daily lives. Meanwhile, we continue to chase, to fulfill, to satisfy our souls, to chase our dream. And meanwhile, trying to, to secure our lives in the future. In this situation, we forget one thing. God is with you. And meanwhile, the devil devours to destroy us and to kill us in every chance and make us throw a stone at Stephan in order to secure our life filled with fear and anger and outrage. But you look at the Stephan was filled the Holy Spirit to commit his life to God's hands, no matter what. He could dwell in God's promise with confidence and courage because he prayed, he anticipated the dwelling place forever, and he depended upon God in every situation, no matter what. We sing, God is our shelter, our refuge, we proclaim that, but we often seek to chase the wrong things that eventually lead us into restless life. We try to find ways to feel safe. So we buy guns to keep us safe. We invent our way into new things to secure our lives more safely instead of taking refuge in God's arms and relying on trust and love and truth in God's way of life. God's way of life is to focus on Christ so that we can walk on the stormy seas. 
the only we can know God, the God's unconditional love, is the life of Jesus who died on the cross. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Jesus is our living cornerstone. He was rejected, but Jesus became our living stone. And the most important structure component of building. And the believers, like us, are building love for the, this spiritual house. So the Peter testifies that we, when we focus on Jesus, we are like a living stones where we can be built in the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But remember, we are not architect. We are not in charge. You are building material. You are like a stone. But we are supposed to be built something greater than ourselves. We are like a living stone when we need to be built together and can be used for the glory of God. When we focus on God, we can abide in God's presence and God's peace and joy, and we can be built together. But if you remain just stone, just remain stone. A stone can be thrown away or be built upon God's promise. When we trust and follow the way of life in Jesus Christ, we can overcome all trials and troubles and dwell in God's peace. That's the message Jesus wants to convey to the disciples. And he prepared for our salvation through the cross. So dear Oxen Hill, what do you seek? What do you secure in your daily life? Would you... Fix your eyes upon Jesus as a living stone for the glory of God. Amen? Would you be thrown away like a just stone? Choose your way. Choose to be a living stone, to focus on Jesus Christ. So I bless you in the name of our living stone, our cornerstone. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way and the life and the truth. And take refuge in God's arms and abide in God's peace. And Jesus says, fix your eyes upon me. Amen? And may be so. May you see the sending of the risen Savior beside you, walk with you all the time. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, <laughs> well, month is AAPI Heritage Celebration Month uh, in May. So we invite uh, the um, Mamo, um, Mana Mamon uh, to do presentation about AAPI Heritage Month so that we can celebrate our diversity. So uh, if you have any Asian American in your, around your family members or your relative, please welcome them and invite them. Let's welcome the uh, sister uh, Mamon. Would you present? Good morning again to everyone. 
May marks Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. It is a time observed annually to reflect and celebrate the remarkable role of the AAPI community in over nation's history. The national 2022 theme for the observance in May is called Open and Close Quote, Advancing Leader Through Opportunity. But my topic presentation today is about something is changing. The real secret to Asian American success. So my question is, do we have Asian privilege in America? Of course not. The real reason that Asians are succeeding is that families are intact and education is very important. A century ago, Asian Americans have been part of the United States for most of its history. They were known as laborers of the lowest wage. Yet, over the decades, despite of poverty, real violence, and widespread discrimination, many Asians managed to clumber up the socioeconomic ladder. Until now, the story of how that happened has been poorly understood. The widespread assumption in that Asian American came to the United States of America very disadvantaged and they wound up advantage through extraordinary investments in their children's education. They live in segregated neighborhood and often sent their children to segregated school. To survive, many opened their own business because no one would employ them can't speak the language. In 1965, changing laws urged, ushered in, in the search of high-skilled, high-earning Asian workers who now account for most of the Asians living in the United States today. Throughout this time, many Asian Americans' families did invest increasingly in their children's education. But the improvement in educational attainment were too modest to explain how Asian earnings grow so fast. This dramatic shift had nothing to do with Asians accruing more education. Instead, the slowdown, dismantling of discrimination, discriminatory institutions, and the suffering of racist prejudices. In the second half of the 20th century, Asian Americans not only started to work in more lucrative industries, but also started to get paid for the same kind, more for the same kind of work. In other words, the remarkable upward mobility of Asian Americans was not about superior schooling. It was the result of Asians finally receiving better opportunities, finally earning equal pay for equal skills and equal work. Asians are being pressed for being hard workers who cherish education, keep their head down and rarely complain. Still, being taught is the old idea that people should not depend, no, I'm sorry, people should depend on their efforts in order to reach 
American Promised Land. Research found that 50 years ago, Asians were held back primarily by lack of opportunities. Now, that discrimination against Asians has lessened somewhat. The Asians is in education is apparent. They have a considerate socioeconomic diversity. Life is not merely to survive and, sur and thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humanity, some kindness, and some love. We all have these goals. We all have ambitions. But there is no success alone. We are all stars, and we deserve to twinkle. We are all stars, but we must learn how to shine. How would you cope watch your little girls, little boys soar? Be the mentor, recognizing their talent and encourage them. Each person is unique, that each future leader has their own personality. The goal is not to make them more like you, but rather to allow them to develop their own strengths and talents. Every child is a unique possibility to be a good leader. It is not the child who needs advice. It is the parents who need attention to realize how life shapes up. We do not need to know precisely what is happening or exactly where it is all going. What we need is to recognize the possibilities, challenges offered by the present moment, by the present moment, and to embrace them, offered by the present moment, and to embrace them with courage, faith, and hope. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Mame Midiribrecia. Now, let us celebrate the Holy Sacrament. Uh, communion service, please come forward. the water to commence after the washing of hands. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him to honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, 
We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were as sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. So the Lord of God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. When we turn away and our love failed, you love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to our sovereign God, and spoke to, our, to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery, to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your, pe your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your world and Holy Spirit. On the night of which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it his disciples and said, drink from this all is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this so often, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in rem remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For us, your Holy Spirit honors and gathered here and on this gift of the bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God. Mighty God, Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is, is one law. We who are many, like a living stone, but we are all partake of the one law. The bread which breaks is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup which we share in is the blood of the Jesus Christ. Our life is built upon this bread and this blood. Our life is built upon blood of the Jesus Christ and God's righteousness. We are here together to build together, communion together. As a United Methodist Church, we welcome all people to Christ's table, this bread and wine, to be redeemed, to be restored, to be forgiven. So come just as you are and receive this blood and bread of Jesus Christ. Today we invite you to come over here and to receive the bread and wine. And then we can take at one time, as I say to you, the body of Christ given for us. And we can take a drink together. The blood of the Jesus Christ covers for us. So that I would like to invite our communion servers to receive first. And then we can take it together and go there. The body and blood of Christ are given for you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you. The body and blood of Christ are given for you. While we are receiving this bread and blood of Christ, and uh, our sister Elaine will offer the Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. 
Let us take it together. This is the body of Christ broken for us. This is the blood of Christ shed for us because God loves us so much. For those who are participating in worship service on Zoom, you can pick up the, this element uh, this afternoon and uh, Monday and Tuesday anytime during the bre bread ministry hours. Um, we want to include you even though you are worshiping on Zoom. I hope that someday you can come to this uh, communion uh, together in one place. Let us pray, thanksgiving prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, if you are able, please arise and let us sing Cornerstone. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not cross the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Face. I rest on his unchanging, 
changing grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the Lord, Lord of all, He is Lord, Lord of all, Christ alone. You may be seated. Christ, our Lord, is our cornerstone. He makes us strong when we are weak. He gives us peace and joy and hope. We are built upon Christ's blood. We are built upon God's promise. We are living stones. As Jesus Christ sacrificed himself to be a cornerstone, we give ourselves as a living sacrifice with our tithes and offering so that we can meet the needs of our community. We can serve our community through our tithes and offerings. While we are giving, so we will do special, uh, our sister Elaine do the special song. Mighty God, we give thanks to you that we bring our tithes offering because you give us so much, your amazing love and grace. Mighty God, as a Stephan, fix his eyes upon Jesus and focus on you no matter what. Mighty God, please make us to focus our eyes upon you and depend on you and trust you so that we can boldly proclaim the good news. Mighty God, we bring our tithes offering. Please bless this tithes offering and bless our lives abundantly beyond our imaginations so that we can have confidence and courage to go out to share your love and your grace. And please accept these living sacrifices so that we can make a 
your love and your grace be multiplied through our giving, through our witness and service and presence. In the name of our risen Savior, our cornerstone, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. And please rise and join me, sing together. My life is in you, Lord. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you. moment I would like to share with you. Uh, in May, it's the AAPI Heritage Month, so, so we celebrate uh, each we, we do the presentation like a Mama did uh, for us uh, greatly. And also, we have uh, this May is the graduation season, and I see there is a lot of uh, great achievement from our young adults. So when you see that uh, our young adults, please encourage them uh, there are so many graduations so that uh, uh, we can uh, welcome them in our community and we can have a communion with them. So please submit the, the name of a student to graduate you know uh, uh, this year via email to assist Mother Brisbane and me and together so that we can celebrate their achievement on June 11. And also, uh, please encourage our uh, kids Sunday school teacher, especially that uh, she's doing a wonderful job consistently. And uh, please pray for her and Adam and other teachers. And Wednesday Bible study, you can join anytime. We do like the uh, studying about the Holy Spirit. So even though you don't have a book, that's okay because you have a Bible and you can have a, use your cell phone or computer to read the scriptures and contemplate what is the God's message to us. Um, VIP Praise Night Watch service every Friday night, 7 p.m. on Zoom, and Stephen Ministry on Tuesday, uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. this week, and also Catalyst Initiate the co-op meeting. We almost walk our journey, the end of the road, and we will present to you, but we have last retreat, and then our Catalyst Initiative team leader, Sister Jackie Murphy, they did a wonderful, she did a wonderful job, and we give thanks 
uh, you know, to God for her and for all the uh, Catalyst Initiative core members. Um, Donna's dance class every Thursday, 1 p.m. And prayer buying gatherings, uh, first Sunday and third Sunday on June. And we have a 239 annual conference from May 31st, June 3rd in person in Baltimore uh, Hilton Hotel. Uh, so the, please pray for the, all the uh, annual conference and bishops and all the clergy and all the churches. And also watch committee meeting to June, uh, June 11th. Uh, let me ask you, Baba Hill Johnson, June 11th. I have to confirm that date. And we have a, a young adult watch service in June 11. Uh, did I miss any announcement? Uh, Brother uh, Ross would you like to make an announcement. Yeah, I did a little walk yesterday for the Oxen Hill Food Pantry. I did 4.2 miles. <laughs> and the good Lord gave us good weather. Also, thank everybody, everybody who contributed to this. This is a wonderful cause. I'm not finished. I will take donations still, if you wish. And uh, like I say, it was a wonderful walk. Met a lot of nice people. And it's a good program. So uh, I also ran upon a police situation. A young fella had been missing since April. And they were handing out flyers. And I believe when I got there to start my walk, there's a whole bunch of people there. And I'm just assuming that they were all going to go out and search for this uh, young man. But anyway, so it kind of made the walk a little different this time. But thanks, everybody, again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ross. And there's one more uh, announcement. We have a teacher's meeting at 7 p.m. on Zoom, so please log in so we can discuss together. Uh, and also we have a, a young adult meeting at Parsonage at, you know, 5 o'clock. But that since we have teacher's meeting, I would like to invite the 4 o'clock. And you will have some Korean cuisines <laughs> that I can prepare for you. <laughs> um, now, Oxenia, receive blessings. Jesus Christ is our cornerstone, and we are our living stone. Let us be built upon God's promise and go out in peace. God wants to use you. God wants to empower you. So bring God's peace and joy and God's amazing love to whom you meet. May the love of God, may the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, may the Holy Communion be with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's bring God's light into the world. If you want to engage with the June participation, you are welcome to say hello. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you within you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you it's in you in hello hi you. so good to see you <laughs> Uh, hey, Mickey. Uh, would you say hello to Christina? She did a great job. Hey, congratulations, Christina. Congratulations, Christina. Yeah. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Always do a good job. You too. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.